Welcome to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt Podcast, the latest swine nutrition research digested for you. I'm your host, Clayton Chastain, and today we have with us Dr. Ashley Dedecker, the Director of Production Research at Smithfield Foods. So Ashley, before we get started, would you mind giving the audience a short introduction about your background? Of course. I grew up in Illinois on our family farm and decided to stay on the area of swine. That's what we raised. Um, I got my PhD at the University of Illinois in 2011. So I've been with Smithfield for almost 12 years now. And as the director of production research, it's tons of fun because I get to do research in anything and everything that has to do with swine production. It can be feed manufacturing, it can be process improvement, it can be nutrition, genetics, health, welfare, meat quality, anything and everything. Um, so I don't ever claim to be a nutritionist. I don't ever claim to be a geneticist or a reproductive physiologist. I'm a scientist, and that's what I stick to. Animan International Supplier of Precision Minerals. When most trace minerals are only bioavailable, Animan trace elements are also active in the digestive tract and permit secure piglets' gut health. Gotcha. So yeah, like you said, you've been there quite a while. I know you've gained a lot of experience at Smithfield. And one thing I would like to talk about um, is some of your experience that you've had comparing uh, mash feed versus pellet feed and micron size for sow diets. So what pros and cons have you noticed in any other things that you think that you've seen that you think are notable between those two um, types of feed between mash and pellet? Well, at Smithfield, I think we have the same question that everyone else does, which is how fine should I grind? and pellet versus mash and specifically talking about sows and we had that question and wanted to conduct a, a study and really looking at the long-term impacts on sow productivity and welfare if there is pro con we know based on the research there's tons of information out there of how the finer grind the finer you grind the corn down to 300 the more digestibility it'll improve more is the more digestibility it'll be more digestible. However, what are the consequences? We know about gastric ulcers, and so we conducted a study trying to look at coarse grind corn versus fine grind corn. So around 950 being our coarse, and around 300, 350 being our fine. And we had several hundred sows on this study for multiple parodies, really trying to understand what are the long-term consequences when you get into feeding those very different types of grind size and corn. And surprisingly, there wasn't any main, I would say, production characteristics of wean weight or number born alive or retention in the herd. However, we did happen to look at ulceration um, in the self regio groove. And what we did learn is that in the first turn, any of the sows that died had already had ulcers. About 70 to 80% of the sows, regardless of treatment, already had some form of an ulcer on there. So that applied to us, or we assumed, they already had ulcers before we got started because they were on a fine brine, which was our normal um, diet at the time. So was the ulcer having an impact on survival was really our main question. So we followed them through a second parody follow them through and we didn't notice a difference on survival however what we really did find is that the sows that were on the coarse grind for two turns their ulcer severity got significantly better implying that it was healing over time while conversely the sows on the fine grind got severely worse now i can't say there was an impact on mortality in those but just over those two parodies we did see a significant impact on the severity of the ulcers but there was still a prevalence regardless so when you put all of that together it gets kind of tricky and i don't think we still have an answer either because about half of our sows are on a really fine brine corn uh, pelleted and the other half of our sows are on a, a coarse mash diet so for us, the answer, the questions are still out there, really. I heard this somewhere, and I believe it was um, some sort of article, maybe written by uh, Dr. Roger Campbell, uh, about ulceration from uh, too fine of a grind. And his um, idea was it wasn't necessarily 
or it wasn't inherently, I should say, the fineness of the feed that caused the ulceration. It was the period of not eating and having an empty gut following the fine feed that caused an ulceration. And being sow diets, I would, I mean, with ingestation, especially when you're kind of limit feeding them, there's that happens a lot more frequently than say like in a finisher pig. Um, did you see any, any results that would have suggested that, or have you done any work? Um, I know we're talking more about sows, but have you done any work also with finishers that might uh, suggest that theory? So we haven't really looked at the ulcers, particularly in grind size and finishing pigs. However, we have looked at coarse grind, fine grind, pelleted, pellet quality, and that impact. And, and like I said, I, the research has shown time and time again, the finer you can grind the corn, the more digestibility you're going to get out of it. And so it makes a lot of sense for your finishing pigs, your growing pigs, to try to get your biggest bang for your buck out of that kernel. Uh, for sows, you kind of have to really ask, is, is the juice worth the squeeze on the sow? Because well, maybe in today's markets, yes, but what are the consequences? What are the benefits in a sow? And to your point of what are those consequences, knowing that we're limit feeding our gestation sows, and if it is causing more of an issue by limit feeding them once a day. So I'd say some of the questions that we still have remaining, I'm not sure I answered your question specifically on that, but some of the questions we still have remaining on the topic are more so focused around what is the right grind size? There's been a lot of research that shows 1,200 versus 400 can see a statistical difference in digestibility or 600 versus 300. But when you really get down to 400 to 500 to 600, how much incremental difference do you see in that digestibility in making it from a pellet and paying for that pellet versus a mash? And so you start to really get down to the narrow, and we've done some metabolism research ourselves in this and haven't been able to see a difference in digestibility between four, five, or six hundred micron. So we're kind of getting down to the real bitty details of where should we be, and I don't think we have the right answer just yet. Another question. So did you do, when doing this study or some of this research you've done, did you see anything in terms of um, like income over feed costs or benefits from reducing that um, grind size? Because I did a recent episode actually with uh, Dr. Roman Moreno where we talked a lot um, about um, pellet versus mash and that was mainly focusing on the finisher. Um, but he was he brought up some interesting points such as um, the difference and like time it takes and transport time um, and transport costs with pellet versus mash because you can only... Um, I believe it was the pellets. You can't fit as much. I believe it was pellets. I could be wrong, but you can't fit as much feed um, in the truck when you're delivering it. And because of that, it has a little bit higher um, transport costs. But um, so did you do any sort of calculation with income over feed costs or what are the, what are the benefits kind of look like there? Yep. Um, and anything we do in Smithfield, if we're doing a study, we want to make sure we understand the cost and the value. And so we did a pretty thorough evaluation and looking at, okay, what is the potential benefit of sow performance? Let's just say hypothetically, long-term, we got a 1% improvement in retention in sows. How many million dollars is that worth to the company? Then to your point, what is the annualized increased tonnage and formulation cost to feed, of course, grind mash and gestation versus a fine grind pelleted? So it gets into what is the additional tonnage for us? So it's around 27,000 tons a year. Um, that would increase to go from a uh, fine grind pelleted to a mash. So, and then the feed cost as well. So you have to think of all of those factors that go into it, the additional and transportation cost, the feed manufacturing costs, what is the savings on not having to pelletize it. Um, and so we had to put all of those together, you know, a benefit here, a loss here, a benefit here, a loss here. And I'll tell you, it gets really close. It gets broken down to you almost have to take into consideration each mill in each location um, and what the capabilities are and that's really what it came down to for us is there were some areas it was beneficial and other areas where it wasn't where it all take take it into consideration all of those factors so it really comes down to what works for you it's multifaceted approach what is your milk 
capabilities or constraints? Um, what is your transportation constraints in doing the additional time? If maybe you don't have enough drivers to do that, uh, which has been an issue for us. So taking all of those factors into consideration, um, the performance of the SAO is just one component to it. And you're right, it's the feed milling, it's the transportation, the additional tonnage, uh, the cost of feed manufacturing. Gotcha. Well, I appreciate you uh, sharing all that with us, but unfortunately, that's all we have. So thank you again for coming on the show to share all your experience with us. No problem. Happy to be here. Glad I can help. Yep. And to everyone else, thank you for listening to the Swine Nutrition Black Belt podcast. Please visit us at swinenutritionblackbelt.com. And don't forget to subscribe to our podcast channel so you won't miss out on the next episode. See you next week. Hey, everyone. We're always searching for the latest and greatest research to share each week. If you have a swine nutrition related research trial and would like to come on the show and share it with us, feel free to email the details about your research to hello at wisenetics.com.